<clears throat> okay, hello everybody. Welcome to our Zoom seminar today on sleep, energy, and fatigue. Um, if you are new to our seminars, let me kind of walk you through what we're going to be doing here. Um, we start at 11.05. I know the seminar starts at 11 and I'm a very on-time guy, but for a lot of people, Zoom is still new technology. So we give people about five minutes to get logged in, get set up. Um, as the lecturer, I have to uh, manually let people into the seminar. So I'm going to be doing that here over the first five minutes. Um, so you still have plenty of time to grab your water, grab your coffee. Black coffee, one to two cups is good for you, good for longevity. And some healthy snacks and get ready. So uh, we're going to get started right at 11.05. Um, again, I'm, um, our office runs on time. Just, just to kind of let you know a little bit about myself, if this is your first time to one of our Zoom seminars, um, I'm a local chiropractor. I practice a, a fairly unique technique called NUCA. It's a gentle, low force type of chiropractic. I've been practicing here for a long time, 20 years. Uh, I've got a clinic up in Summerlin, which is where I practice. I've got another office down in Henderson. And so um, for many, many years, uh, we've practiced gentle, low force chiropractic to help people get out of pain. And in that process, we've done a number of lectures on various topics on wellness and health. In other words, once we got people out of pain, whatever that was, neck pain, back pain, uh, pinched nerves, headaches, migraines, what we then began to do is teach our patients things that they could do to take better care of themselves and in fact live to 100. I'm on a path to live to 100, which means um, I've studied and lectured on and wrote a book on living to 100 and all the things that are involved with that. And we're obviously gonna touch on a number of those things today. So it's more than just better sleep, less fatigue, but more energy. It's practicing a series of things that will give you a higher quality of life later into life because when I ask most Americans do you you know do you want to live to be a hundred most people say no they don't want to live to be a hundred because their perception is that that is more pain more suffering um lower quality of life but if you rephrase the question and ask okay well if you had a higher quality of life and in this particular seminar we'll go over sleep and and uh, better energy and, and less fatigue um, but if you had a higher quality of life, then would you want to live to 100 and beyond? And obviously most people do. So the name of the game is quality of life. And if I can help our patients get quality of life, either directly in the clinic or through things I teach them, then I'm doing my job as a doctor. Uh, the Latin root for doctor means teacher, not big shot. So as a doctor, it's my responsibility and it's my passion to be, to be educating uh, our patients and the general public. Okay, so again, if you're just tuning in, we're gonna start here in just a minute. I always give people 
about five minutes to get logged in on, get tuned in so that, um, you know, it's new technology and everybody. Okay, so what you want to be able to do um, in front of your computer is you want to have me front and center. You want me to be on speaker view. That way, when I show um, some images or graphics, you can see that easily. Obviously, you want to make sure your sound is on, everybody's muted and your speakers are on so that you can hear me. At the end of the seminar, we'll try to carve out some time uh, to do some Q&A. So again, over the next few minutes, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth and um, letting people into the seminar, but it's five after. So we're going to go ahead and get rolling here and uh, we'll let the rest of the people in as we go. Okay, hello everyone. If we haven't met yet, my name is Dr. Devin Luzad, owner of Spinal Care of Nevada. We have offices up in Summerlin and Henderson. My patients just call me Dr. Devin. So again, make sure your sound is on, I'm front and center and let's rock and roll. Today's class, hi Ricardo, welcome again, um, is going to be on sleeping better, increasing energy and reducing fatigue. Sleep is critical for your body's ability to really do everything, to fight off pain, um, infection, disease, getting restful sleep is, it's really both a science and an art, um, but it can be improved. So today we're gonna go over um, best mattresses, how to buy a mattress, the best sleeping pillows, um, stretches for better sleep, uh, and a lot more. We want you to be able to wake up feeling more rested, with less pain, more energy, um, and less fatigue throughout the day. Um, so just so you know who you're getting your advice from, if we haven't met, um, I am a what's called a NUCA chiropractor. I practice a gentle type of chiropractic. Um, I've been in practice about 20 years. And part of my passion is to lecture. I've lectured at large companies and corporations like Walmart um, with thousands of employees, um, um, William Sonoma, which has a corporate office right near my clinic in Summerlin, about 750 employees. And then, um, you know, as the world opens up again, I'll get back out and speak to my patients' groups. My patients are in, are in women's groups and church groups, and, and I get out to businesses and do lectures. So every month I always do a, a lecture in our office, um, but, but because we're not really gathering in groups, we've been doing the, the Zoom webinars. So by profession, I'm not a sleep doctor. I don't prescribe sleep medication. By professional training, I'm a NUCA chiropractor. Um, but you know, obviously I didn't get into the profession to fix sleep problems. I got in to help with people with pain and we're very, very good at that. Um, but then I saw people through our gentle treatments as a side effect, start to get better sleep. I would have patients that we treat for, you know, pinched nerves or disc problems or arthritis, and then come back and say, hey doc, I'm sleeping better. I'm getting to sleep better. And I found that interesting. And what I found out is that sleep is largely controlled by this area at the top of your neck called your brainstem. Your brainstem is kind of the power box for your body. It also controls what's called circadian rhythm, which is your sleep cycles. Um, it also controls what are called sleep movement disorders, which is twitching at night or restless leg syndrome. Um, we found that through the treatments that I do in the office, it reduces this hump in the back of your neck called the dowager's hump, which has a lot of control over breathing, breathing problems, even sleep apnea. And I don't claim to cure those things. We just found through better alignment, our patients were getting better sleep. And so that's just part of the picture of, uh, of getting better sleep. We're going to go over environmental factors, mental, emotional, setting up your room better, um, setting up your bedroom better. There's no magic pill though. Okay, so if you tuned in hoping for that one magic pill you can take, and I am going to go over things you can take for better sleep, but if you're looking for that super thing that fixes everything, it's not the right seminar for you. Okay, a lot of what I'm going to teach you are things that you have to do and, and you're going to need to practice. Uh, so this seminar is all about you. Um, but in a, in a roundabout way, it's also about the people that you care about, the people you live with. You know, um, most of you have worked your whole life, worked to raise a family, worked in a business, contributed to the community, um, and you gave, gave, gave. And now you hit your golden years, and it's not so golden because you can't keep giving from an empty cup. So this is really time to take care of you. And by taking care of you, you obviously take care of all the people around you and in your life. 
Um, and that's really what we are about. So settle in, we're gonna get into the information. Um, as always, we're gonna go over the top five key beliefs to living a wellness lifestyle first, because you have to have these five things in place in your life or really nothing else health-wise is gonna work for you. So the number one key belief to health and wellness is to be natural. And we wanna to try to solve problems without the use of drugs and surgery. Drugs are the third or fourth leading cause of death. Uh, side effects to properly prescribed prescription drugs is the third or fourth cause of death in our country. Sleeping pills have massive side effects, bad on your organ system. You can end up um, sleepwalking, sleep shopping, believe it or not, sleep gambling, sleep uh, driving. All of these things are negative side effects to take, taking sleeping pills. And let's be honest, when you take a sleeping pill, you're not nearly as rested the next day. So we want to be natural where we can. Always try to be natural before taking something invasive. And I'm not against drugs and surgery by any stretch of the imagination. I've had to take all of those things. But I think you'll all agree where we can be natural, we do. The second big key belief to wellness and a wellness lifestyle is being preventative, being proactive. 20 years ago, I only saw patients when they were, you know, basically dying of pain. Nowadays, about 10 to 15% of our practice is prevention, is maintenance, is people with no symptoms, no pain, no problems, and we're aligning them to be proactive so that they don't develop things like arthritis. What is arthritis? It's not a disease. It's not something genetic. Arthritis, degenerative disc disease, is something where you get out of alignment over a long period of time, but you don't feel that. You don't feel your own out of alignment. What happens is you're out of alignment for so long, and then there's friction, and those body parts wear down. You lose a disc, it pinches a nerve. That's how arthritis develops. So being proactive means not waiting versus being reactive which is where you find yourself saying, well, hopefully it'll go away on its own or it's not that bad yet. Anytime your body is expressing a symptom, it's asking you, it's begging you, please go find a type of doctor that will fix me now before it comes something, becomes something that costs you a lot of money, before it becomes something where your only option is being invasive. Okay, so being natural, being preventive. Procrastination is a thief of health. The third key belief to wellness is that your body heals itself. You don't always need a, a pill, a potion, or a powder put in. You just need your body in alignment so that it can heal itself the way it was meant to. The fourth key belief to wellness is that it's inconvenient, might cost you some money, might take some time, might inconvenience you. If you're not inconveniencing yourself in the name of better health, you're probably headed the wrong direction. And the fifth key belief to a wellness and healthy lifestyle is consistency. Health is, was, and always will be about doing something consistently. Okay, so that's the five key beliefs to health. We're gonna jump into the core content of our talk today, which is going to be sleep, better energy, and better health. Now, I am going to put this webinar up on our YouTube site. I'll show you how to get to that YouTube site later. The, our YouTube site, uh, you go to youtube.com, type in Spinal Care of Nevada. All of our talks are going to be on there, a lot of other health tips. Uh, the first thing we're going to kick off with is finding the right mattress. It's a huge hot button. I can't tell you the number of times a patient comes to see me and before we even start treatment, they said, man, I wish I would have come to see you first. I just spent two, three, four, five thousand dollars on a mattress and it, and it didn't fix anything. So for one reason or another, you may decide to be in the market for shopping for a mattress. And there's all types. There's foam, there's spring, there's hybrid, there's air beds. I've studied and researched this subject for a long time. Probably over 40 years I've studied this subject and we spend a third of our lives sleeping. Um, so it's an important subject. You probably need a new mattress every roughly 10 years. Um, because an old mattress or the wrong mattress can actually worsen certain conditions like asthma, breathing, pain in your body, insomnia. Um, and we got to take a lot of things into account. Your frame, your weight, are you a side sleeper, back sleeper, um, all of these things. So starting off, firmness. The best firmness 
um, of a mattress allows you to uh, support your body weight. Soft to medium firm are best for those that sleep on their side. Stomach slippers, which is not recommended, but some people that's the only way they can sleep. You definitely need more firmness because when you're sleeping on your stomach, your neck is turned one way or the other. You're already in a compromised position. You don't want to sink too deep into the bed. Back sleepers tend to be better off with medium firm. Um, similarly, individuals weighing less than 130 pounds may require a little bit softer mattress. People weigh 230 pounds or above need more firmness. But generally speaking, you're looking for medium firm. Thickness. The thickness can vary tremendously from five to 15 inches. Um, but the same concept applies to thickness as with firmness. The, the heavier you are, the more thickness you're gonna need. Um, also, if you have trouble getting out of bed, uh, a, a more firm mattress is gonna be easier for you. Okay, motion containment. Especially if you sleep with a partner, motion containment is critical because when you move, they're going to feel it. So a mattress that provides uh, motion containment is important. I had a water bed as a kid. It was a lot of fun. Didn't work so well into adulthood. Okay, pressure relief. Pressure relief refers to the way a mattress conforms to different body shapes. Um, mattresses conformity depends on its comfort layers or number of layers. So in our house, we have a, what's called a hybrid. It's a combination of a little bit of memory foam and a little bit of gel with a cooling top. Um, one of the most popular mattresses that I always recommend is a sleep number. It's also the most expensive. I didn't buy one, but patients that have them love them. So you want to take into account a couple other factors, temperature and cooling, especially if you get hot in the middle of the night. Most mattresses come with a trial or warranty. That's important because it's going to take you four to six weeks. Just get used to a mattress anyhow and safety certifications. Modern mattresses typically come with safety certifications, either a Certa Pure US certification or what's called an OIKO, O-E-K-O tech certification to show that they're not created with harmful materials. Okay, next up, I wanna get into some sleep positions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to get onto my YouTube channel and I'm gonna play you a short video that is also available on our uh, YouTube channel to get into sleep positions. Okay, so to, and you can do this later because I'm going to play the video here, but to uh, get into our YouTube channel, what you're going to do is you're going to go to, obviously, uh, Google, get online, type in YouTube, and then uh, in the search bar, type in our office, Spinal Care of Nevada. And it's going to bring up what's called our YouTube channel, which is this. This is our logo here. So you just click on that. And one of the first videos that pops up is our better sleep and less fatigue. So I'm going to show you some proper sleeping positions uh, in this video. In fact, the National Sleep Foundation says that nearly one third of people who've undergone chiropractic adjustment say that they experience an immediate improvement in sleep. So, a few tips to help you sleep on your stomach. There are specific pillows that allow you to sleep on your stomach without turning your head either way. Those links are below. But without that special pillow, try to share the load throughout the night and spend some time with your head turned to one side as well as to the other. Now, if you find that it's painful turning your head one way or the other, or the range of motion is less, that's a critical sign of an underlying subluxation. Subluxation is a term you'll hear a lot around our office. That's where the bone in the neck is misaligned, and it may be pinching a nerve. Subluxation is what we in the office both detect and correct. Place a supportive pillow underneath your lower legs when you're on your stomach. This slight bend will help keep that curve in the back. Can I borrow that? Thanks. And it'll look something like this. Or you can place a pillow underneath your pelvis. 
which will also help you maintain that curve in the lower part of your back. Hey, that's my hair. Okay, the two highly recommended positions to sleep on from Harvard. Number one is your side and the other one is your back. Let's talk about sleeping on the side first. You're gonna create a pillow palace. There, there's no perfect pillow. Um, I really like this pillow, which the link is below because it's got shredded memory foam in it, so you can shape it different ways. Um, when you're sleeping on your side, the most important thing is neutral spine, so that your head is not tilted one way or the other. Um, this will also help you with hip and knee problems. Now think about this. When you're standing, your legs are about hip or shoulder width apart, but when you're sleeping on your side, they compress together. So you need a spacer in there, which is a pillow. So when women are pregnant, doctors recommend they put a pillow in there, but it's good for everybody, guys and women. Okay, so I've got a few different pillows. This is just a simple couch pillow. And what we're gonna do is get into a side lying position with the pillow underneath uh, my arms as well, which keeps my shoulders from rolling together. And bulking up this pillow underneath my head keeps it in a neutral position. So I've got a pillow in between my knees. I keep blocking the way again and a pillow in front of me. This pillow in front of me also prevents me from rolling too far forward or backward and creating a twist in my spine. This is the perfect position to sleep on your side. Okay, so that was the perfect sleeping position when on your side. When you get sick of that, then you need to roll to your back. Now, patients with breathing problems tend to have more of an incline underneath their upper back. Those, those kind of those adjustable beds that raise your legs and uh, raise your upper back are great too. We see a lot of patients with pinched nerves in the low back like sciatica, uh, herniated discs, um, low back pain. So sleeping in this position generally takes the most pressure off. Two, three. Some of our patients take a rolled up towel and actually slide it underneath their sheet. And that gives them a permanent way to keep a pillow underneath their knees, just like that. That little bend in the knees helps you maintain the curve in the low back. So it takes a lot of pressure off. For those of our patients who have sciatica or severe low back pain, use even more pillows like this. That helps you raise your legs up a little higher and keep pressure off the low back. Now you notice the pillow underneath my head gets a little bit flatter because again, you don't want your head cramped up into your chest. That will affect your breathing as well. So this is the safest position in your low back. Some people still put a little roll underneath their low back. And when I've had patients, for example, who've had shoulder surgery, they can only sleep on their back. Their low backs tend to get better. What do you think about that? Pretty good? A portion of the Okay, welcome back. So um, that's how you get to the YouTube channel. There's a lot more information on there. I will get this seminar up there eventually also, um, so you can access that. Let's go through some great general sleep tips. We talked a little bit about medication already, and it's true that medication all have terrible side effects. As far as um, one of the problems people have at night is what's, what's called cycling. Your brain just won't turn off. There's a few tips to help out with that. Um, during the day, you can actually do some meditation, five to 10 minutes to quiet your mind. Some people keep what's called a worry journal by their bedstand. You know, you wake up, you have these worries on your mind and you go to sleep and you journal that out. In other words, you get it out of your brain and you get it onto paper. And also a gratitude journal. If you can write down 10 things you're grateful uh, for before you go to bed, you get your brain in that state and your mind in that state of being grateful versus worry. And remember, one of the best things about making a plan for your worries is that when there's nothing to be done, you can just relax, smile, and have fun. Okay, uh, things to avoid. Obviously, you know to avoid caffeine and sugary drinks before bed. Actually, even after 3 or 4 p.m. is good. I generally, if you go to bed at 10, I wouldn't eat after 8. So don't eat food two hours before bedtime. It's the sugar rush, the energy required to metabolize food uh, can often keep you up late. Also, caffeine can be hiding in a lot of things. Believe it or not, decaffeinated coffee has caffeine in it. 
some medication. Um, for example, Excedrin uh, migraine has 130 milligrams of caffeine. Um, anything with cocoa, such as chocolate, chocolate ice cream, sorry, all of that has caffeine in it. Uh, now, if you do get up in the middle of the night, you really wanna to try to avoid turning on bright lights to find your way around. I have little um, plug-in uh, amber lighting in most of our bedroom, the lights are amber, so that when we wind down, amber lights uh, don't stimulate what's called the occipital cortex in the brain uh, as much as LED lights. LED lights literally trick your brain uh, and your circadian rhythm into believing it's daytime. So when you wake up in the middle of the night and you go for that midnight snack, that light hits you, it actually, your body thinks it's morning. It'll take longer uh, to get back to bed. You know, before you go to bed, this is a big one. This is one that's worked in my own life. I have a problem where I would get up for an hour, two hours in the middle of the night and I just couldn't go back to sleep. A big thing that fixed that for me is we put a, um, like a lazy boy, it's like a, it's, I actually have like a, um, a zero gravity chair that leans back, but you can do the same with a lazy boy or a small couch. Don't get into bed until maybe 20 to 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes before it's time to go to bed. In other words, if you're going to read or watch TV, which I don't recommend, but um, before bed, but if you do, don't be in your bed. Don't be in your bed for any longer than 15, maybe 20, 25 minutes before you go to bed. And then when you do, turn everything off, lay in your back, and let yourself wind down naturally. Um, because if you're spending an hour or two in bed before you go to bed, you're gonna be uncomfortable in the middle of the night and you're gonna end up waking up. The other big thing is if you are a person who gets up in the middle of the night and you know that you're then gonna to toss and turn for a while, commit to not tossing and turning. The best thing you can do is get up, sit in a comfortable chair or couch with dim or amber lighting for about 20, 25 minutes and then go back to bed. That change may, it may make you feel like, oh, if I get up, I'll never go back. But if you get up, get somewhere comfortable, let your body be in a different position. When you go back to bed, it'll be much easier to go back to sleep. Another trick to getting back to sleep quicker is trying to think about the dreams you just had. That, that literally puts your brain back into a dream state. Sometimes you can't remember your dreams, but if you practice that when you wake up, you can even write some of your dreams down. That helps you remember your dreams easier. And if you as you're trying to go back to bed, if you start thinking about your dreams, as long as it's not a terrible dream, that gets your brain in a sleep dreaming position. Um, you know, invest in your environment. Create a very, very darkened room. I had, I put, uh, we have uh, neighbors that sometimes play music uh, too late at night. And so I put up um, sound blockers in the bedroom windows of our room. So we can't see outside anymore, but it's worth it because the sound is blocked. These are like the, the foam panels that you see in music studios or radio stations. I put them in the, in the uh, against the windows. We have room darkening curtains and we just basically get the room as dark as we can. Obviously you can use a mask, earplugs and white noise, um, but have a, have, a, have a kind of a, a wind down ritual. Techniques before you're getting into that sleep. Um, in one study, a relaxing massage before sleep helped people uh, get to sleep better, relaxing music, reading a book, hot bath. Um, but those routines help. For those of you who are still working and travel a lot, I know that's more difficult, but again, you do the best you can. Avoid alcohol a couple hours before bed. In my Live to 100 class, we do discuss that a glass or two of wine of night, uh, most people that, uh, a lot of people who live to 100 and beyond are having a glass or wine of two a night. But beyond that, it starts to mess with your circadian rhythm. You get what's called alcohol sleep, where you wake up in the middle of the night and no matter what, you're not gonna be able to get back to sleep. Um, exercise. In people with severe insomnia, exercise actually offered more benefit than most drugs. Exercise reduced uh, the time to fall asleep, it reduced wakefulness and it reduced anxiety. So daily exercise is it. You don't want to exercise again an hour or two before bedtime, but getting activity during the day helps um, increase uh, all the sleep hormones. Now, um, let's go through some things that you could start to take as far as natural sleep aids that will help you get some shut eye. Because again, we, we, we really want to try to avoid any of the, um, you know, the dangerous things like, uh, like medication, 
even over the counter medication. Um, you know, there's problems with that stuff too. And again, let's be honest, it doesn't, it really ends up not making you feel very alert. Like the next day you, you may be able to get to sleep, but you kind of feel a bit drowsy, uh, leading into the next day. Okay. So natural sleep things you can take, uh, melatonin, melatonin, interestingly enough, is actually a hormone in your body. Your body produces it. And what it does is it, is it signals your brain that it's time to sleep. Obviously, with age, we, we have difficulty producing all of our hormones like we did when we were younger. Um, so melatonin supplements have become really a, bit, a very, very popular sleeping aid. Um, people take them when they travel. Uh, anytime their sleep cycle could be disrupted. Several studies show that melatonin uh, improves uh, your sleep quality as well as duration. Um, valerian root, and, and by the way, there's, there's some substance that, uh, some uh, supplements that combine all of these. Valerian is an herb, um, it's, it's, a, it's a root um, commonly used to treat anxiety, depression, um, and menopause, by the way. So um, some of the studies on it will show that it helps you get to sleep quicker and relax, stay asleep longer. Magnesium. Magnesium is a, it's a mineral. Obviously, it's involved in hundreds of body processes. Um, it's also important for brain function and heart health, but it may also help quiet the mind and body. Studies show that magnesium um, has a very relaxing effect, maybe partly due to its ability to regulate production of melatonin. So it helps relax the muscles and do sleep. You can get magnesium a number of ways. Uh, you can actually get it through salt baths, like um, uh, Epsom salt baths. One study found that a combination of magnesium, melatonin, and vitamin B was effective in treating insomnia. Um, so one study gave participants 500 milligrams of magnesium, um, or they gave the other participants a placebo. And those who took uh, 500 milligrams of magnesium slept better. So obviously you would take that closer to bedtime. There's a lot of CalMag supplements. Um, don't get too crazy with your calcium supplementation. Your body, most of us have calcium throughout the day. We get it from water, we get it from food. Um, so don't, don't even do like a three to one ratio, like 1500 milligrams of calcium, 500 magnesium. You wanna to try to get those a little bit more equal or just take a straight out magnesium supplement. Um, lavender, the lavender is a, it's obviously a plant helps induce sleep. Um, also you can get that in tea. Passion flower is more of a, a drop. It's an herbal, uh, supplement for insomnia in a recent study. Those who took passion flower extract, probably sublingually under the tongue, um, over a two week period saw significant improvements in certain sleep, uh, patterns. And now glycine is an interesting one. Most people haven't heard of it. Uh, glycine is an amino acid, plays an important role in the nervous system, but studies show it made uh, it improve sleep. Researchers took measurements of people's brain waves, heart rate, and breathing while they slept, and it had a positive effect. Okay, some other supplements uh, include tryptophan. Most of you know that one from Thanksgiving. It's in Turkey, helps you fall asleep faster. Ginkgo biloba, according to some studies, consuming around 240 milligrams of this natural herb, about a uh, half hour before bed helps with sleep, also reduces stress. And L-theanine, L-theanine, co uh, consumed daily, about 400 milligrams. What it is, that's also an amino acid, helps improve sleep and relaxation. Um, they've done studies on that help. So that's a lot of supplementation. Obviously, you want to start with uh, melatonin, valerian root, and see what else uh, you need to take from there. But it takes some time to uh, usually configure all that. Okay. So as we're kind of winding down the seminar, we go about, we always talk for about 35, 40 minutes, uh, lots of good information. You know, in our office, the goal is to create better body balance, to create better alignment. According to the John Hopkins website, posture and sleep play a very important role. Um, and again, by professional training, I'm a NUCA chiropractor. My whole goal is to realign the head and neck gently which gets pressure off the brainstem. And we already talked about the brainstem controls circadian rhythms, your sleep cycles. Um, by getting the head on straight, so to speak, it helps the body balance out underneath. I can't tell you the number of times I've helped people with low back pain, hip pain, leg pain, just by realigning the head and neck. Because what happens when you wake up constantly throughout the night is you, your body can only tolerate because it's misaligned. 
your, own, your body can only tolerate being in one position for so long. So you wake up and yes, some of you have to go to the bathroom, but you wake up and you shift and you move and you shift because your alignment isn't right. By getting your alignment better, your body doesn't continually wake you up to keep moving. Um, and finally, we work on what's called the dowager's hump, which is that, that big hump that unfortunately we start to form later in life or for some of you earlier in life. We adjust that area, we help reduce that area, reduce the swelling because the bigger this hump gets, what happens is it compresses your heart, compresses your lungs, causes uh, sleep trouble. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you uh, just a real quick video on that. Um, so on this video, what you're gonna see is that is the brain sends nerves all the way down the spine, okay, and um, the nerves end up controlling everything. So up here at the very top of your neck, if you have pressure on what's called the atlas bone or the brain stem. That controls all the nerves up into the head, which by the way, can play a role in stress and anxiety. I don't claim to cure nervousness, stress, and anxiety, but I can't tell you the number of times I've adjusted that top bone in the neck and that gets better. Middle of the neck is also an issue. If this bone is out of place, that controls the nerve to the thyroid. Thyroid, hypothyroid, that has a, a really strong effect also in uh, sleep as well as metabolism. Okay, so that's just some examples of, um, you know, areas of the spine that control uh, things having to do with sleep. Okay, so we're going to wind up the class. Um, if you have any questions, you know, usually people don't have questions at the end of this. You do have a function on your computer uh, under Zoom participants. You can raise your hand, but probably the best way to ask questions is just shoot me an email. Uh, I'm going to put my uh, contact info uh, here up on the screen for you. Um, but if you have a question, my website is www.drdevin.com. And you can just go there, fire me off an email, or if you have a, a pain or a health problem that you have a question about, um, you know, we can go over that as well. Um, if you've never been a patient in our office, um, but you have pain or a health problem that you haven't been able to get rid of, here's our process. Um, I never have in the history of my 20 years ever charged patients um, just to sit down for 20 minutes, half hour, take a health history, do some exams to see if we can help. So we always do a consultation and that, that's kind of day one in our office. We do a thorough health history, listen to our patients, take an exam, and then from there, we would proceed to taking what are called digital opposing view x-rays. It's the best type of imaging in our field. I don't know why more docs don't do it, but this type of x-ray shows many times exactly where the problem is and it shows us how to fix it. So that comprises day one. Um, it takes me an hour or two to study the film. So we'll schedule folks a follow up. On day two, we're then gonna go over the films. I'm really upfront. If I can't help you, I'll let you know. We'll find you the right doc. Um, and if you're anything like me, you don't like hidden costs. So I will let you know cost, we'll go over coverage. It always varies um, and we go from there. So day one, the consultation is free. X-rays are out of pocket, it's $90 per section of the spine. So if we take neck and back, that's 180. If we just take neck, that's 90. Uh, a lot of you have uh, federal benefits, which is like Medicare type of thing or replacement policies. They don't pay a dime for chiropractic X-rays. So the consult is free. I never charge to sit down. X-rays are $90 uh, per section of the spine. Okay, um, our contact information is up on the screen. I'm gonna pull that down and say goodbye to you guys. It's been a wonderful class. I enjoyed having you here. You can check out our YouTube channel for more tips, sleep tips. We'll put this seminar up there later. And just remember, your health is a force. It surrounds you and protects you at all times. It is just waiting to be directed by the power of your will. There's always hope, so don't ever give up hope. Guys, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you at the next class.